Hey, welcome in. It's uh, Jason Puckett. I like to go by as Puck. Uh, we are off this week for Thanksgiving, so whenever you are watching or listening to this, maybe we're on Thanksgiving. That would be something. If you were uh, watching me or listening to me on Thanksgiving and so tired of your family already. Uh, appreciate it. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Thanksgiving week. Uh, despite us being off and no daily puck drop and no regular guests uh, this week, we will be back on Monday, December 2nd. And again, we'll have our full show starting once again Monday, December 2nd. I wanted to say thank you to all who have been supporting Puck Sports here for the past seven plus months, eight months almost. It has been, it's been awesome. Uh, I love doing it and I love entertaining you guys. So thank you for uh, being along for the ride. Uh, we are leaving you here this week uh, with our first installment of our exclusive VIP content up at Pucks Posse Community Membership. If you have not signed up yet for the Pucks Posse Community Membership, I would encourage you uh, to do so. Uh, you can go into the website pucksports.com, and there is a link there to the Pucks Posse Community Membership. I'm sharing a link, if you're watching this, of the uh, Pucks Posse Community Membership page. You can join on a monthly basis, you can also sign up for a year. It's going to give you content to everything that we do at Puck Sports, all access, all the time. You will not miss anything, including all of our VIP content like we have right now. And you're about to get a preview here momentarily of our Mariners off-season diamond table. Well, that was really clever, wasn't I? Uh, where we sit down with Ryan Divish and Adam Jude of the Seattle Times, Jim Duquette of Major League Baseball Network Radio, and also Bill Kruger and Brad Adam of Root Sports. It is two-plus hours of baseball content. We look back to 2024, what went wrong, looking ahead to 2025. Can they change it? What issues do they have to remedy in the off season does ownership care about you you the fans and will they spend and are they committed to winning a championship and what areas do they need to improve uh the baseball team because there are many uh, areas where they need to move uh, and improve the baseball team we're going to give you present you uh during this holiday week a 15 minute preview uh, both video and audio of the mariners off season diamond table uh show uh, but again, if you want to watch or listen to the full two-hour-plus show uh, with all those great baseball guests we have throughout the uh, baseball season, uh, you have to become a VIP member of the Pucks Posse Community Membership. And again, monthly membership, you can sign up there. If you have any issues financially, email me. I'll take care of you. Uh, Puck at PucksSports.com. Uh, but again, I encourage everyone to sign up to become a member. It gives you access to everything that we are doing and everything that we are doing uh, in the future here at Puck Sports. So, to entice you to sign up, uh, here is a, a sneak preview, a little teaser for you of our Mariners off-season diamond table with Ryan Divish, Adam Jude of the Seattle Times, Jim Duquette, MLB Network Radio, Brad Adam, and Bill Kruger of Root Sports. Enjoy it. Eat and drink and celebrate and have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving week. We will again talk to you uh, when we come back for the Daily Puck Drop on Monday, December 2nd. So until then, as always, I promise to be better. I think a large portion of the blame pie falls onto ownership for putting everyone else in a position where they had to, you know, change their philosophy and how they went about building a roster. You know, the impetus for all their moves was to free up money. The moves weren't great, and they woefully underperformed, and the scouting of professional hitting continues to be a problem. But I, I put a large portion of the blame part, blame chart on uh, ownership for putting them in a position to kind of have to, you know, garage sale shop. In a lot of ways, but, but you guys know, I mean, being around and understanding the fat fan base, right, Adam, and and just the 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 temperature of the team when, when fans hear them complain about lost revenue with the TV deal, they 
they shake their head. They go. And again, you could call it excuse making um, and all the investments and the other uh, um, businesses and all that, too. That that all factors in. And at the end of the day, you just want a good product on the field. and You want a chance to feel like, um, you know, the ownership wants to win as much as you do as a fan. Right. I get that. Um, I think every fan base wants to feel that way. Look around baseball. Um, you know, I would say the Mariners are more the norm. Right. You, how many owners come out and say, you know, they're willing to invest however, $300 million. And again, uh, I, I, I guess I would go back to Major League Baseball. It's just, it's an unfair, unlevel playing field from the get-go, right? Just, you know, obviously the Mariners uh, should and could, could and should um, have, a, have a larger player uh, payroll. I think we all agree on that. It doesn't need to be $300 million. No, but um, we think it should be more commensurate with, um, you know, the market size, right? They're right about number 13 market. I think this year they finished at number 18 in MLB payroll. So look, you 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 give this team right now, I'm projecting they have between 10 and 20 million dollars to spend this offseason. You give this front office 30 to 30 million dollars to spend, 40 million dollars to spend to put them more right in that number 13, number 14 range in terms of payroll. I think they could do a lot more. I think they could go out and get a Christian Walker uh, for 20 million dollars a year, who to me to me solves a lot of your problems. Right now, the way I see it, Christian Walker is just out of your price range. Money helps solve a lot of problems, doesn't solve everything, but a little bit better, a little bit more of an investment. Um, with where they're at as an organization, they've got the core on this roster. They've got the core. That's not changing. They've had it the past few years. This is what the step back, the rebuild was all about. They've got it. Now you've just got to add from the margins, add one or two nice pieces still, and you feel like you can legitimately challenge for the Astros. I just don't know that they have the, the financial resources to make that one splashy move this offseason. It's hard to feel sorry for billionaires when you're when they're adding millions. I mean, and, and like the one thing you can say is like it's not just one guy. This isn't just Steve Cohen emptying his pockets. There's multiple billionaires on that thing. And it, you know, I think to me and I think to fans, the the grasping is this is like, look, you're talking about performance or whatever, and you have a set goal. Like, it's like your van, Puck. If you want it to get to a certain place and you know it's not going to get there, you have to invest money to make it get there. And, like, I don't think that's the – I think that's the problem. And I don't think that the the Mariners ownership group kind of understands the perception of all of this. Is like, look, you can come out and say you want to win and you want to win championships and you want to do all this stuff. On the surface – they're not doing any more to invest. Like these guys have more than enough financial resources. Okay. Like the projections for root sports weren't great when they started building the hat back grill, they thought it was going to make money. It doesn't. Okay. How do you offset that? Do you invest more of your dollars into it? Or do you just charge $27 for a cheeseburger instead of 25? Like, I think that's the problem that they don't understand. And they don't understand the reality of the common average fan because these guys, don't interact with them on that much of a basis. And I think that's a problem. Well, why can't they invest more of their own personal capital as the responsibility of an owner and of the deal they made with the city, you know, to have the lease on T-Mobile Park, like put out a product, you have to invest more. You know what? You're not making as much money as you thought you were going to, then it has to come from somewhere else. And it's not like they don't have money. This isn't like somebody making minimum wage and their car breaks down and they got to find a way to make it work. Okay. It's just, it's an unrealistic vision of what they think the fans think of them. And it's been a problem for a long time. And I think honestly, when they thought that they made the postseason in 2022 or whatever, they thought, okay, that's all, all the goodwill that they had lost for those years was back. Well, no, what? No, you got to post, you got to build on that. Instead, they went the cheap way. Cause as Adam said, if you give them $30 million a year, you can fix a lot of things. If they would have had an increased payroll going into last season or the season before when they went the Tommy LaStella route, they wouldn't be in the position they are now because they could have went out and got when the market was more robust to get better players. And that's the problem that they run into. It's no different than when Howard Lincoln and those guys were trying to capitalize off of 01 and 02. The team was getting older and they're just trying to patch it together instead of making drastic steps and drastic investments, you know, and I guess they tried with Richie and Adrian Beltre and it failed, but like, you just can't keep patchworking it together. At some point you either say, we're going to win and we're going to invest more to ensure the fact that we don't have these issues 
or get out. I mean, that's kind of ladies and gentlemen, Jim Duquette, a uh, former major league baseball GM Mets and Orioles analyst, MLB network radio on Sirius XM can follow him on X slash Twitter at Jim Duquette GM. You know, they, they've said as the season is winded down, Oh, you know, we just have a, a few spots in the infield to replace. And I'm thinking few, I mean, third base, second base, really don't have a first baseman. And I really don't have a DH. I mean, it's it's almost and 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 we could I could make an argument that if something presented itself at shortstop, you could upgrade there. I mean, they've got a lot of holes um, in that infield, Jim, and, I, and there's not a lot of great free agents at like the particularly the two spots where they have identified publicly the most: second base and third base. Correct. I mean, there's just not a lot out there. No, there, there's not. I mean, there's a couple of things you could do. At second base, you know, Glaber Torres is available. Uh, yeah. He doesn't, he, you know, he's a he's he's an upgrade. He's not a bit huge upgrade, but he could also hit on occasion uh, at the top of your lineup. Uh, Bregman's out there. They're not going to probably spend a lot of money. He's going to get paid a ton. Adamus, who you could move from short to third, but he's going to get paid a lot of money. He doesn't seem to be able to fit within their budget. Um uh, First let me base. let me stop let me stop you there yeah. because yeah. that 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 one is intriguing to me is Willie Adamas is that something that they I should be aggressive about doing because he's 100%. publicly said out there that yeah I'll, I'll switch positions and it's been it's been thought that he could go and easily play third base one hundred percent he is the absolute guy that you want to pursue if you're any team Seattle especially um, because of uh, how good he is as a player. Uh, uh, offensively and defensively. Yeah, I don't think he'd have any problem making the transition. And he is a plus makeup guy in the clubhouse, exactly what you would want in your clubhouse. So, uh, yes, Adamus would be a fantastic fit. Um, um, so that's a guy that I wouldn't totally dismiss. The other guy I wouldn't dismiss. I mean, they have first base hole. Okay, you and I talked about them trading for Alonzo. I don't believe Alonzo is going to get you know, a uh, uh, too close to two hundred million dollar uh, figure. I think it might be one hundred and fifty. So maybe that's outside the budget. Maybe it is isn't. But Christian Walker is a really good player and a Gold Glove caliber first baseman. He's a little older, but he would fit in a shorter. You know, you don't have to go six years. Um, so that's a fit. You know, what I mean, so so there are fits out there for what they what they have, what their needs are. Um, so you know, I, at the end of the day, uh, that they don't. How much money do they have to spend? They they spent one hundred sixty four million this past year. It looks like they have 160 committed. There's yeah, not much I, room there. No, and I mean, you know, you know, if you look at Adamus, right, his market value is going to be what six years, 150 plus. Going to be in that range. Yeah, might be, might be 180, but mm. seven, something like that. You know, it's okay. going to be. But you could probably get him for 25 uh, a year. You know, on an average annual value, that would be your whole, your whole budget, unless you move. Unless you non-tender somebody, you know, you could also, you know, you could try to non-tender, but now you're cutting into the depth of your roster, and that's what you definitely need depth too. But he's the one guy that I would, you know, if if you could do just one thing, get, get an everyday middle of the lineup bat, and then yeah. piece it together the other way, the other uh, positions. And, and and maybe that maybe that would be good enough for them. I because I like what you said. It's not only just the player offensively what he brings, but um, defensively. It's what you said, though, about what he brings in, in the locker room, in the clubhouse, because, you know, there's been this big swell of support to bring Justin Turner back, and, and I understand why you want to bring him back because of what he means inside the clubhouse, but I'm also like, he's 40 years old. Like, right. at, at some point, can't we find a, a better a better version of Justin Turner out there than someone who's 40? Right. Uh, but but Adamus seems like he, he checks all those boxes, especially that leadership role. Well, he, he does. And, and by the way, you could do both. I mean, Turner's not going to have many uh, suitors and it's not yeah. going to be a, that expensive. And, you know, he, he's not going to be a player that's going to play 140 games anymore. You know, so you can improve your your, your versatility uh, within within the roster, which is something that I think has been lacking there. But Adamus is a great fit, um, you know, and he, he you know, if you look at uh, him in Milwaukee, uh, you know, he's a big reason why they've won the division you know, here as many years as they have. You know, people have viewed him as a shortstop, but in certain circumstances, if he gets the money, whatever, he, you know, the, the money that he's looking for, he'll move positions, he'll move to third, he'll move to second. If you like Josh Rojas at third, put him at second base. You have an opening, yeah. you know, at second if you want to. So, like, he could go either either way for uh, for a middle infield. Well, you could have guilted them to come back 
and do an off-season recap because who didn't want to recap 2024 and then look ahead to uh, 2025. Look at the smiling faces there. Uh, Bill Kruger, just the uh, the essence of a man. Black coffee, <laughs> steak. He builds uh, things with his own hands. Never Bill, looks at instructions. Never looks at instructions. And then there's Dude. tools. Then there's myself and Brad Adam. We like an English breakfast tea. Uh, yes. We like pajamas and and maybe a warm cuddly blanket and a bath. Yes. And we just, mm -hmm. you know, players like Rojas and even Dylan Moore, they become more valuable if they're not being put into a place where we have to have the field bet every game. We have right. to look exactly. at the whole lineup every game because it's a combination. Well, most teams don't. Most teams have guys that play with character, that play with defense, mm -hmm. that run, that do some things because you have the right guys in the spots that hit, right? It's just time. It's time. There's yeah. no answer at first base coming. It's time. It's yeah. time. You, you can't wait for the kids that are in A-ball. Let's go. We need – and there's ways to do it. There's Christian Walker. I've read three years, 66. Yeah, that that's about right. It's not yeah. ridiculous. He's a good player, man. He's yep. good in the clubhouse too. I mean, I'd rather have him than Pete Alonso, who's going to be far more expensive. We probably yeah. can't even touch him. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think uh, Brad's idea makes a, makes a lot of sense. And then we're going to have to. We're talking about the infield. Crawford is going to have to. He's going to have to fix it. Yep. This forward press try to hit the ball in the ballpark. The forward press the top of the bat. He's going to have to flatten the bat out, man. Let's go. I got to. I got to rev hit twenty five homers. Let's go. You got to get better. Now this is the time where we glance back down at our system that they finally actually have this sort of Baltimore Oriole light kind of group coming that the Orioles have now fashioned into a, a big part of their team. We yeah. have that little group that's in when, was in Modesto last year that's coming, right? Yeah. Uh, the Colt Emersons, uh, the, the Youngs, the, there's a bunch of them there. I don't know all their names, but they're going to be middle infielders. That's where we're long suited. So why go buy an expensive law? Because we need, you know, if the Mariners are going to succeed, they have to have position players that come through the system because it's very difficult for us to get a hitter to come and play for us on the market because either they won't come because it's Southern Alaska or they won't come because we don't have a long winning record or they won't come because it's freezing cold in May and April and they won't shut the roof or they won't come because the ball doesn't carry or whatever the reason is they don't come, but they don't come and we won't overpay it. So we have to have the system provided and the system is lagging. Unfortunately, it's not perfectly timed so they could be super mm -hmm. like perfect and stay really super cheap and have all this control and all this wonderment around the Yahtzee of a team that they already have with the five premium pitchers, the young closer, the center field, the shortstop and the catcher. I mean, if anybody in baseball could have that, they would be like doing cartwheels. But we are sitting there in this angst of like frustration because we can't seem to deal with Yahtzee. We can't seem to be able to say, wow, we've got Yahtzee. We're like, oh, I don't know. Like, what do we do? I mean, we can, we can, we can, we can find. We can I find go for another. Yahtzee every time, by the Yahtzee. way. Yahtzee. Yeah. We're, we're going to find the same cast of characters again on the edges of the market like we yeah. have the last two years. I mean, my I, gosh. I think that's what they're going to do, right? right. I mean, well, then, well, get you know. a reliever, get a second baseman, <laughs> and, and get maybe Justin Turner or another platoon at first. But don't, That's but don't they, like what they're going to do. But don't they then? And and, and I'm, I I agree with you. I mean, it's it's yeah, the right. way they talk is setting for, for that all up to yeah. be the case. But don't then they find themselves in the same situation again? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, that's why. That's why I can't <laughs> wait for those cleats to start yes. on the ground well, down in Peoria. Why, that's why the trading yes. of Castillo makes the sense because it uh, plays yes. right into the hand of their yeah. of their being so you know cautious with money. Yeah. You want to be you want to you want to be in in the world of saving money. Get rid of him now because it's I don't see it. I don't see him going up from where he's at now. He is he posts. And he starts, and he's good. But yeah. I can kind of see it coming. That this is the time, man, and and right. that saves them money. Then they should be happy. If you could turn around a uh, hundred million dollars over the commitments and turn into two two years twenty four with Matt Boyd and, a, and an option, wouldn't you do that? If you're just looking at looking at the numbers, sure. And then what does it allow us to do? Well, we can spend some more money now without overdoing what we have, right? I mean, it's just yeah. To me, that's the, that's the linchpin of the linchpins is 
is to get him understanding that we're ready to move on from him and get him a great situation with a team. No bad team's going to take him. Only a good team. Yeah, yeah. So right. I don't know. Do they need a reliever? Yeah, we could talk about that. You know, they need they need some help in some of these places where they they're really smart, right? They're really good at finding you know guys under mm-hmm. rocks that nobody's ever heard of that were pitching in you know independent ball, and then they show up here and they have. A, a sub one ERA for you know the season. <laughs> I mean, to their credit, they've done it. Yeah, guys that are like dying, they, they they're dead. The sea walls <laughs> of the world, they'll never pitch again, and they come here and they're an all star. So I, I take guys out of the morgue, yeah. out of the morgue, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're That's close. <laughs> yeah, so they're close. That's yeah, they got that feels, for us. Yeah, yeah. I like what it's going to be though. It just kind of feels like the same kind of off season. 